Hello everyone. Uh, I am Amit Kapila. I am a senior Postgres developer and committer. I am working in Postgres SQL from last uh, 10 to 15 years and in databases from past 20 years. Today I am here uh, to share with you about logical replication, especially uh, past, present and future of logical replication in Postgres SQL. Uh, and also I forgot to tell that I work as a senior director in Fujitsu, who sponsor my all the work in uh, PostgreSQL open source community. So the uh, broader uh, level of agenda for today is, uh, I will first walk uh, through uh, the overall high availability and scalability solutions and then how the evolution of logical replication has happened in PostgreSQL. And then uh, the basics of logical replication in PostgreSQL and some of the key features of it. And then I will talk about what's going to come up in the coming release of PostgreSQL 15, which is going to happen in September, and probably what's going to happen beyond that in logical replication area. And then I will talk in journal about the multi-master solutions that could be built on top of the PostgreSQL technological replication solution. So yeah, that's all the agenda. So let's start with uh, high availability and scalability solutions. So I think this is the most basic uh, solution uh, for high availability where uh, there is a master and multiple standby nodes. Here we, perform the physical uh, replication. And if uh, the master nodes go goes down, one of the standbys get, uh, users can promote it to make a new master and make uh, the other standby follow it. So now here, uh, the thing is that the writes can only be performed on the master node. And we can only scale by routing reads to the standby. And for multi-site writes, still need to go to master, which is time consuming. So if there are multiple sites and uh, writes have to happen at different sites, say the standby uh, one is, uh, is at a different uh, site, then still the writes have to go to master. So uh, this is very time consuming uh, given the network latency involved. And then on master node failure, there is always a time lag to promote the standby because we need to apply the residual wall uh, so that it reaches to the uh, latest level and then we start accepting the right requests. Then there is a common phenomena in this, which is, uh, we know uh, well known as split brain, like when two masters start operating at the same time. Basically, the old master which went down sometimes comes up, and now we will have two masters in the system. So uh, this can lead to data loss, and some human intervention uh, is required to make it work. So this is the basic form of uh, high availability solution where your data will not uh, be lost, but the right scaling and is uh, quite limited. And also uh, there is a, a, qu a quite good amount of delay uh, while promotion of the standby. Then we have other kind of uh, scalability solutions which is we known as a uh, master master uh, solution. And so here writes can be performed on all the nodes, unlike in the previous topology. And all the modifications are done on a single shared storage. If one of the node goes down, writes can still continue on the other node. In this, there is almost zero uh, or minimal failover time. But because all the data is shared, if writes happen on the same resource like table or page, there is a lot of communication required between nodes uh, to make 
that right happen so such a solution do provides high availability but it can limit the scalability of uh, such workloads oracle rack is a typical example of such a system now uh, then comes uh, another uh, thing uh, multi master which is called here we have uh, separate storage for each of the nodes and writes can be performed on all the nodes modifications are performed in a separate storage and can be replicated to other nodes as you can see in this diagram the uh, wherever the data is written either on the node 1 or on the node 2 it can be replicated to the other node and if even if one of the nodes goes down writes can still continue to perform for the from the other node this has a zero or minimal fail over time and multi site writes can take slightly uh, more time because the data needs to be replicated uh, needs to be replicated to the other node now in this case uh, in such solutions normally uh, many a times conflicts can occur when modifying the same database or resource like uh, sometimes we uh, try to delete the row and that row is already deleted on the uh, node where we replicate the delete so such things we call as conflicts i will talk a little bit about this conflicts later on in my slides so uh, the for such solutions we need to see uh, how to resolve the conflicts normally the conflicts can be resolved either automatically based on predefined rules or user can choose to manually resolve them for example there is a primary key violation user can manually try to delete the uh, conflicting row from the node here split brain won't be a problem because from the very beginning all the nodes act as master unlike master standby here both reads and writes can be distributed among various nodes so this is the uh like biggest win point over the first solution which i talk about uh, uh high availability solution where we have a master and standby here both reads and writes can be distributed some other typical use cases for uh, such a system or such a topology are uh like we can uh send incremental changes in a single database or a subset of a database to the other subscriber as they occur or consolidating multiple databases into a single one then we can also replicate between different major versions of the postgres sql and then we can also allow uh, giving access of replicated data to different groups of users so now i will talk a brief about how the logical replication solution has evolved in postgres sql through various releases so the founding features for logical replication have been started to getting uh, matured in 9.4 where we have added logical decoding which is the backbone for this whole logical replication this is the uh, solution which allows uh the raw wall data to be decoded in a form uh which can be sent to another server in a sql form so these are uh and to support it we have replica identity and replication slots introduced in postgres sql 9.4 then through each release like through 9.5 till 14 we keep on adding the features to make this solution more mature like then in 9.5 we have added track commit uh, time stamp or rep progress of replication these things help us in conflict resolution or if the replication solution uh, need to track the progress till where the replication has happened and i think the major feature then the co in core Uh, we have added the logical replication in uh, postgres sql 
And then through 11, uh, we have allowed to replicate the truncates and reduce the memory usage. And then we have in 12 uh, and 13, we have enhanced it with uh, slots to be copied and allowed logical decoding workmen. So before 13, the memory of the uh, replication system can grow to a very large uh, amount depending on the size of changes. But with 13, we can control that. And then we can also, we have allow, also allowed to replicate the partitioned table. Like all the partition uh, hierarchy could be replicated just via the uh, root table. Then we also allowed uh, a new parameter max slot wall keep size, which will allow us to limit the wall that needs to be protected corresponding to uh, the slots. Then Postgre 14 bring in uh, quite a few number of features to further enhance this solution, like streaming of in-progress transaction, uh, then monitoring of uh, logical decoding of transactions. Then we have improved the initial table synchronization. Then decoding of prepared transaction. Then we have improved the performance when there are a lot of DDLs in the system. Then we also allow to transfer the data in binary mode. Then also we have allowed some syntax to ease the users uh, to set up this uh, logical replication. So there are various features which made uh, logical replication a bigger with Postgre 14. Now I will talk in brief about logical replication, uh, how it works in Postgre SQL and uh, some of uh, its core uh, ideas which we have lately introduced in Postgre SQL 14. So uh, this is a two node uh, system where uh, we, I have shown how the logical replication happens. So if you see uh, the box on the left side, which I mentioned as primary database and a standby database, actually the writes can happen on any node, but here I have shown uh, that the writes happen uh, on the primary database and then it flows to the uh, standby database. So what we do here is like, as the operation happens uh, in the primary database, there is a background process called as wall sender, which keeps uh, getting the wall or keep reading the wall from the uh, wall files. And then via the uh, output plugins, it sends the data over network to the secondary uh, database after decoding it. And then in the standby database, we the uh, there is an apply worker which grabs, receives that change and it performs it like a normal uh, SQL operation like insert, uh, delete or update or truncate. And then the data goes to data and wall and the users can read it or write, even write it in the in that system. Here, I have shown a single way system, but the same thing could be built uh, in both the directions. So this is the basic uh, mechanism, how the replication works, logical replication. And note that the basic, by default, it works uh, at the commit time. Like each of the transaction is decoded only at commit time and then send to the standby database, which then applies the entire transaction. So uh, as I have told uh, in the previous slide that in the basic or the default system, all the transactions decodes at the commit time. So the, for the very large transactions, this leads to a very big apply lag because still the transaction all the wall for the transaction is decoded. We don't send it to the standby. But with Postgres equal 14, we start streaming the data for in-progress transactions as well. 
So some of the benefits are like, in many cases, we even don't need to uh, send the data. In that case also, normally it used to, uh, it, normally it used to uh, accumulate that, that data on the disk and only at commit time, it decides whether to send it or not. This leads to a lot of uh, wastage uh, of resources, especially IO on the publisher side. Now, because we can allow to send the data at the earlier point of time, the data gets discarded and never gets spilled to the disk. So this feature saves a lot of disk IO for such transactions. And we have seen the performance improved by two or more times due to this. Then uh, I will briefly take you through the enhancements we have done to allow the incremental decoding. So now when to start the streaming, like we can't do it for each change at, as it comes because then it can uh, take a lot of network bandwidth to send each change to the uh, standby. So we send the changes when uh, the wall size exceeds uh, the logical decoding work mem uh, parameter, like which describes which can by which user can uh, configure how much more memory uh, after how much memory the transaction should get either spilled or sent to the subscriber. Then the big thing is that because we can uh, decide to st start stream the transaction at some random point uh, in the transaction, we need to have the association of all the transaction and its sub transactions. Uh, otherwise, we did, uh, we know that only at the commit time. So we can never gather all the data which needs to be sent. So th this, uh, we have introduced a new mechanism so that these two transaction and all its sub transactions get associated the first time uh, for any sub transaction, we write a ball. And then there are, Postgres has a mechanism of sending the invalidations. So we now started writing invalidations at each command and into the wall so that decoding can use this information. This is basically helpful in processing the DDLs. So uh, the, uh, earlier it was again done at the commit time. So we need to do at each command so that we can send the data as soon uh, as we want. So this is uh, the basic idea. Like now you can see from the left side that instead of waiting till commit, we have split the transaction into multiple streams. For each stream, we send the start stream and close stream packet so that the standby knows that one stream has happened for a transaction and it spills that data to a temporary file. Similarly, the multiple streams of a transaction can uh, come and there could be other transactions between those uh, streams as well. The, it, it could be quite complex. So, uh, but the end goal is that all the transactions get applied in the order in the commit order only. So uh, this way we allow the data to be sent to the uh, subscriber and reduce the apply lag uh, by them. But now at this stage also, you can see that we, till the commit time, we don't start applying. The amount we have saved here is that we didn't wait till commit to send all the data. So uh, there could be a natural extension to it that as the data comes, we start applying it via some background worker, which we are planning to do in future releases. So uh, to uh, support the streaming of in-progress transactions at the core implementation level, we also extended the logical replication protocol to identify in-progress transactions. And uh, then we have modified the app apply worker on the subscriber side uh, so that it can write the files 
or spill the data to the temporary files. Basically, you, by default, uh, the streaming doesn't happen for in progress transactions. Users have an option to make the subscription uh, with this streaming on option. After that, uh, the publisher side or the master side can stream the data for in progress transactions. So this is one of the features uh, of post major features of PostgreSQL, which I have explained. Yeah. Next, we will talk about PostgreSQL 15 and beyond. So here, one thing to note is this is based on what I could see being proposed in the community at this stage and being done. Any feature being done for PostgreSQL 15 can uh, can be changed or reverted till it is released based on the community decision. So th this is a nice feature uh, which is going to come in PostgreSQL 15, hopefully, uh, logical replication of prepared transactions, which means the uh, now we can send that uh, transaction and it's all the changes at the prepared time instead of waiting till it gets committed. So this, first of all, reduces the apply lag and then it can allow a two phase between a uh, multi master solution. So I'll come to the advantages of this, but you can see from this diagram that at the prepare time only we apply all the changes on the uh, subscriber side and at commit time we just commit it. So this reduces a lot of apply lag before this Postgres 15, all the data of such transactions only get applied at the commit time. And mind it, as I have shown in the diagram, between prepare and commit, there could be a lot of other transactions as well. So this will allow us to support two PC via logical replication, and it will reduce the apply lag, as I have shown you, uh, told you. And the other big feature is that this kind of feature can help us to build a conflict-free logical replication. Because at the time of prepare only, we will know if there is a conflict. And if there is a conflict, we can roll back that transaction even on the master. This, is, this would be slightly costly, but in some financial institutions, uh, it could be quite useful. The next feature or set of features I'm talking about is, again, to enhance the logical replication solutions to make users replicate easily the data. The first thing is to allow the replication of all the tables in the schema. Before this feature, if you want to allow all the tables of the schema, user has to manually specify all the tables. With this, they need to only uh, specify all tables in schema with schema name. And then similarly for the sequences. So this will allow to publicize all the schema, uh, which will help users to replicate all tables in that particular schema instead of specifying them individually. So basically this will help reduce the manual intervention by users where they need to keep sync in uh, sequences in sync before this feature. Then another interesting feature we have developed for PostgreSQL 15 is row filtering for logical replication. So here you can see uh, in the syntax that user can specify the where clause to filter the rows on the publisher side. So this will help us to send the selective data to the standbys. So uh, this will reduce the network bandwidth and uh, improve the performance. We have seen the performance with this improve proportional to the number of rows being filtered. And another big uh, advantage is that user can create multiple publications and then shard the data based on this 
on the various nodes so that the data can be uh, various parts of the uh, data could be replicated to different nodes. So this was a, one of the major features of logical replication for Postgres 15. This was going on from last four years and we were able to complete this in this release. So I hope this helps a lot of users. Then we have a, another feature which is being uh, developed for Postgres SQL 15 is named as column lists. In this, users will be allowed to specify the columns which they want to replicate rather than replicating entire row. So restricting the columns will be useful when the target table doesn't have the same columns as the source table. And the columns in the, and sometimes columns in the source table can have the sensitive information which users might not want to replicate. So such a feature will be uh, really useful for such use cases. Now uh, comes to an interesting topic which many users are uh, care in this system, which is uh, we call as conflict resolution. So as I have told you that uh, the conflicts can happen in various ways, like the primary key violation or the update delete conflict we normally call, where the row that we tries to update on the standby database doesn't exist anymore, or the row is already deleted. So all such things are referred to as conflict. Currently, can, users can resolve conflict manually by removing the conflicting data or by skipping the transaction via PG replication origin advance, which is a function which will allow you to advance the uh, transactions uh, wall and start applying from a new transaction. Uh, and then with Postgres 15, we will be allowing to skip the conflicting transaction by directly specifying the LSN uh, in a SQL command, which I will explain in next few slides. Now, the big thing is that all the detailed error information will be available via the server logs that will help users to identify the conflicting transactions and help them to skip those transactions in case they are not able to manually resolve it. And now uh, the, another feature is sometimes like currently whenever the error happens, the replication stops, but the apply worker keeps on restarting and keeps on retrying till the conflict is resolved. So for the cases where conflict can't be resolved automatically, we have provided a feature to automatically disable the subscription when a conflict occurs. And then we have introduced a new system uh, view, PG stat subscription stats. This shows the stat information about error occurred during application of logical replication changes, as well as during initial table synchronization. These stats are removed when the subscription is dropped or users are allowed to use a reset subscription stat function to reset single subscription or all subscription error information. In future, we can extend this to track the other ZEC related statistics like number of ZECs committed aborted for a particular subscription. So the information uh, that will be available to users in this view is like uh, the apply error count and the sync error count for each subscription. So basically this gives users some statistics like how many errors have, how many different errors have occurred in the system, either during apply time or during sync time. Now, I'll try to uh, explain in brief 
how users can uh, skip the transaction with this uh, new feature, which we name as auto subscription skip. So with this feature, users can actually supply the LSN value of the conflicting transaction and skip that transaction. So normally the conflicts can produce the following kind of error. You can see here on my screen with third bullet point, like duplicate key. And then we give the detailed information about the replication origin and the transaction and where the transaction has finished. So users can fetch this information and use this LSN with the alter subscription command, you know, skip command and the apply worker will skip all the data modification changes within that transaction. So this should help us users to proceed uh, when the manually conflict resolution is difficult or tricky. So hopefully we'll see this feature in PostgreSQL 15. So then I will talk a little bit about the some other miscellaneous features uh, where we are also working on allowing logical replication from physical standby. As of now, if the primary database goes down, the subscribers cannot connect to the physical standby and continue the replication. So with this new feature, we can allow the subscribers to connect to physical standby for existing publication and get the data. This feature will also provide a way to continue logical replication after the standby is promoted to master. So this, uh, this work is not going to get done in PostgreSQL 15. Probably in future releases, we'll see this work, but we know this is a very important work and will help a lot of users. So then we, till now, there was a restriction uh, before PostgreSQL 15 that only super users are allowed to perform the replication changes. With this, we will allow non super users to also apply the changes on subscriber provided they have permissions on the required objects. So this will help in easing some uh, requirements for logical replication and I hope users will like it. Then there are other some big features which will uh, make logical replication much more lovable for PostgreSQL. And they are also, they are not active discussion under active discussion for 15, but I am hoping some of this work has got some traction lately. And I hope in future releases, we will see some of these or all of these, like DDL replication. This is one of the most demanding feature uh, for major version upgrades, where you currently users need to manually set up the schema on both the nodes. So this will help to uh, uh, happen it automatically. Then we will provide the to provide automatic conflict detection and resolution handlers. This is really a very big and multi-year project, which we hope to see someday in PostgreSQL. And then we uh, want to also do parallel apply. Like one of the uses that for streaming transactions, we currently just uh, write the to the temporary file and then only apply at commit time. We can slowly start applying it in the background worker. And also we can start applying as soon as the normal transactions also start coming rather than waiting for the commits to happen. And by via multiple workers. So this should help us to improve the speed of uh, replication. And then we don't have a bi-directional replication of same table, which limits the use of logical replication in PostgreSQL because the user won't be able to set up bi-directional replication. We have started working on this and I hope to see this feature in future releases. 
So this is all about the features uh, and how it evolved in PostgreSQL, the logical application, how it evolved in PostgreSQL. Next, I will talk about some of the multi-master solution or some of the multi-master topologies that could be built on top of PostgreSQL, what PostgreSQL provides. So this is the first. Sorry. Uh, first topology where one can set up the n-way bidirectional logical replication, which means that there will be n copies of the data, and any table can be read or written from any of the data nodes. So if you see from this diagram, the data can uh, come from the coordinator node, uh, which will uh, be used for the node uh, load balancing. And it will route the writes to different nodes depending on some configuration. Like data node one will uh, write to table one and table two will be routed to data node one. And that data node one will uh, replicate table one and two to data node two to allow scaling. Similarly, for table three and four, the data will be routed to data node two, but it will be replicated to data node one so that reads and writes can be performed from any node. So for the multi sites, here you can see the data can be returned to any node or sorry, to the nearest node. So this is one of the topology which could be built over top on top of PostgreSQL solution. So what I have shown here is not by default provided by PostgreSQL, but users can, or the other application developers can write a thin layer over top of PostgreSQL to route the data and to route the read and writes to get the benefit of bidirectional logical replication, and it will also help us in scaling reads and writes. One of the drawback of this system is that there will be n copies of data, which will require massive amount of storage and massive amount of network transfer. So then there is another way we could build a uh, multi-master solution on top of this. So this we call as one master database, which will have all the data and other data nodes will have specific set of tables. So whereas uh, this will help us to reduce some of the drawbacks of the first solution where data needs to be seen across all the nodes and the storage in all the nodes uh, have to be for all the data. Here we should have one master node which has all the data and other nodes are for specific uh, tables. So you can easily see that if user knows its data topology and the uh, queries well, they can shard the data in such a way that reads and writes can be scaled to a really uh, each node level and in fact with a uh, fallback that if there are uh, queries which have to perform across all the nodes which have to get the data from all the no nodes they can query the master database and get all the data so here uh, we can see that for table one and two only it needs to go to data node one. And from data node one, it gets replicated to the master node, the data node three. For table three and four, reads or writes have to be gone to data node two, and just it gets replicated to node three. Now for a join of uh, table two and table three, it needs to, the query needs to be routed to data node three because it has the data from both the tables. So yeah, this, uh, let me try to summarize both these solutions, 
each have its own advantage and disadvantages. So for the first solution where we can have n copies of data, uh, so all, number of data copies will be equivalent to the number of nodes. And here total data distributed across the nodes plus just one copy for supporting joins. Then single table read, read from any node will uh, happen in n copy data. Whereas uh, in the distributed solution, we will, coordinator will identify the data node and route the query. Similarly, multi table reads can happen from any node in the first solution, whereas uh, query has to be routed by coordinator to the special data node we call as master node from where all the data needs to be fetched. Writes can be done to any node, whereas here writes needs to be done to, uh, to the particular data nodes. Data gets synced to n nodes. This is the one of the plus points where is in the second solution, data needs to be only synced to one node. And in the first solution, it can be managed with a very light weight uh, load balancer or coordinator. Whereas in the second solution, coordinator needs to manage the data slicing, slicing across the cluster. Data visibility uh, point is that it allows us slightly older data as data replication will need some time unless user choose to use the synchronous replication, in which case there won't be any lag and data will be visible in the same order. Now replication sequence will help, uh, sorry, will uh, allow conflicts, which I have explained uh, how conflicts can be resolved. Scale up, if we have to add more nodes, none of the solution requires downtime. Whereas if we have to scale down, probably the first solution doesn't need any downtime. Second solution, how we implement it depends, but probably it will require the downtime. So this is the broad level comparison. And that's all from my side for today's presentation. And I'm happy to hear your feedback. Please provide your feedback to me at amit.kapila16 at the rate gmail.com or if you have any questions after this presentation. Thank you very much.